Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. And I do want to get back to a story that we brought you as breaking news over the weekend after three young Palestinian men were shot over the weekend while walking near the University of Vermont campus. The man suspected in the crime has been charged and did enter a not guilty plea in court earlier on today. This is a booking photo that has been released of the man identified as 48-year-old Jason Eaton who police say they encountered on the scene Sunday afternoon. We're told his apartment is located in front of where the shooting happened, and after a search of that apartment, the chief says Eaton was arrested. Burlington police say all three men shot are 20 years old, and two of them were wearing keffiyehs at the time. Officers say Eaton walked up to the men with a handgun and fired four shots at them without saying anything and then ran off. An official uh, tweeting out this photo of those three men yesterday. Police say two of them were struck in the torso, another in his lower body, and at last check, two are stable, while the other man does have more serious injuries. The chief of police and the city's mayor holding a news briefing moments ago, and I do want to play that for you here on Live Now from Fox. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mayor Moreau Weinberger, and I want to thank you all for joining us here in Burlington's City Hall. The Saturday evening shooting of three young Palestinian college students visiting Burlington on their holiday break was one of the most shocking and disturbing events in this city's history. This horrific, unprovoked attack was a tragic violation of the values and character of this welcoming, inclusive community. I'm grateful that as a result of a huge, coordinated law enforcement response led throughout by the Burlington Police Department that the suspected shooter was off the streets in less than 24 hours, and that we were able to announce the arrest of Jason Eaton just after midnight last night, so that Burlingtonians were able and relieved to go to school and work this morning knowing that the shooter was in custody. Mr. Eaton has now been arraigned and charged with triple attempted murder, charges that carry the potential for life sentences. This case remains the top priority of the Burlington Police Department. The investigation will continue, as will our collaboration with state and federal partners, to give our prosecutors the strongest case possible and to ensure that Mr. Eaton is held fully accountable for his actions. These law enforcement actions, while outstanding, will not erase the damage done by Saturday night's violence. It is incumbent on all of us to continue supporting the victims, their families, and their communities. <clears throat> we are honored to be joined at this press conference by Rich Price. Rich is a longtime Burlingtonian, and he was hosting the three young men during their visit. And he's also the uncle of Hisham Awartani, who was the most seriously injured of the three men. Um, I believe um, we are also joined, although I have not had a chance to meet him directly, we've spoken by phone, but um, I believe uh, Radi Tamimi is either here or on his, on his way. He just flew in from California this morning, and he is the uncle of Kanan. Abdul Hamid, Rich, and I hope you'll share this with Roddy if I don't get a chance to directly. I am so sorry that this terrible event happened to your nephews here in Burlington. Thank you for your collaboration and coordination, Rich, throughout this ordeal, including the conversations that we had yesterday. And please know that the city is going to continue to do all that we can to support you and your loved ones during their recovery. We're going to get a chance to hear directly from Rich in, in a minute. <clears throat> I hope that Burlington's Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim communities see in today's prompt arrest the city's commitment to justice and to keeping all members of our community safe. 
I have been and will continue to be in communication with Muslim leaders about how Burlington can support their communities through this time of war and high international tension. I want to thank you, Chief Murad, and the hardworking and skilled Detective Bureau led by Lieutenant Mike Belvo for once again bringing a shooting investigation to a prompt resolution. Your quick and forceful actions over a holiday weekend on the heels of the push you've been making to solve the November 12th double homicide speaks to the commitment and the character of the Burlington Police Department. I'm grateful, Chief Murad, also for your leadership creating the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force more than one year ago as we experienced a spike in gun violence this community has never experienced before. As you will hear in a moment when Chief Murad reviews the steps that led to the arrest of Mr. Eaton, that task force of local, state, and federal partners, including critically both the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, as well as the FBI, responded immediately to the shooting and played a critical role in the events leading to the arrest. This task force has become an invaluable part of our response to serious events at a time when we and so many other law enforcement agencies are understaffed. I'm also very grateful to State's Attorney Sarah George for working deep into the night last night to secure search warrants and bring forward charges. Thank you, Sarah, for your partnership and leadership. And finally, I am grateful that U.S. Attorney Nicholas Karras is here with us. Not only has the U.S. Attorney been extremely supportive throughout this event, the federal government has provided enormous technical resources and law enforcement capacity throughout. And I have received direct support from the White House and the Department of Homeland Security as well as we navigated this unprecedented event. In fact, um, one of the reasons that this event got this press conference got started a little bit late is that I just had an extended phone call with President Biden. It was my honor to thank the President for his leadership and caring for our community and for the victims of this terrible crime. And it was also my honor to make clear to him the critical role that federal partners have played in securing this quick arrest. We are very fortunate to have dedicated public servants working in the federal government who are committed to holding shooters accountable for gun violence despite the enormous barriers in the law and regulations uh, that they face in trying to conduct that mission. And with that, I would um, like to uh, ask Chief Murad to um, walk us all through the events since Saturday night that led us to, to now. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, sir. Uh, and hello, everyone. My name is John Murad. I am the Chief of Police here in Burlington. Um, and first of all, I want to acknowledge that three young men have been the victims of an unprovoked and terrible crime and that their lives have been changed forever. One in particular faces a tremendous struggle and recovery with injuries that may be lifelong. They've been named elsewhere, but uh, in, in my personal communications with the family and in detectives' communications with the vi with victims initially, that was not something that they wanted, uh, and so our communications thus far have not named them. But in their innocence and their suffering, and for that of their families and their community and our community, that can't go without mention. Um, and next, I, I want to share uh, details about this incident and the investigation as we currently know them. And all of this is preliminary information for an investigation that is ongoing. And this is only the beginning of this investigation for our detectives, for the Office of the State's Attorney, and uh, for our federal partners as well. We allege that Jason J. Eaton, 48, committed three acts of attempted murder. On Saturday, November 25th of 2023, at approximately uh, 1826 hours, in front of an address at 69 North Prospect Street, we received calls that people had been shot and there had been gunfire. Uh, officers arrived and found two men shot at that location being tended to by people from the address who had brought out uh, blankets to cover them. It was a very cold night. Uh, both of these men were incapacitated by, that, by the, the gunfire, but they were talking and conscious 
Uh, another individual was located on a street to the east, also suffering from a gunshot wound. That individual was transported directly to the hospital by Burlington police officers. Uh, the first two young men were treated on the scene in an emergency response sense by our great partners at the Burlington Fire Department and then were transported to the University of Vermont Medical Center. This began now uh, a, a, an investigation. Um, unfortunately, we have become all too good at this in this city. Uh, we have gone from a city that routinely saw two gunfire incidents a year to a city that saw 26 last year, and I believe this was number 16 or 15 of this year. Uh, we responded, our detectives were called out, our identification unit or, or the CSI kind of unit that we have was called out, and so was the Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force, which uh, was, was a creation um, of Alex Schmidt at the ATF. Uh, of, of this police department and of partners at Milton, at Colchester, at the South Burlington Police Department. Uh, all of these uh, members, ret uh, excuse me, responded to this incident and we began the things that we do. Evidence recovery, a canvas, uh, a partner with Fish and Wildlife brought a canine. That canine did a track but was most instrumental in finding additional evidence at the scene uh, that was hidden and obscured in the grass. Um, we recovered ballistics evidence at that scene. Uh, a, we recovered shell casings from a 380 semi-automatic uh, and that was Hornady ammunition with a red tip. Um, both of those things aren't entirely usual. They're, they're not uncommon, but uh, we see 9 millimeters more often than we see 380s, uh, and that was something of note. Obviously, this was only the beginning of an investigation. The young men were interviewed by detectives they stated that the person had not made any comments to them and had merely approached them while they were walking down the street, uh, essentially minding their own business. Um, and they were uh, speaking in a mixture of English and Arabic, uh, which is, is their want. Two were wearing kafiyas. Uh, and they had no uh, knowledge of this individual, had not encountered him before. He stepped off a porch and produced a firearm and began discharging that firearm. Uh, we recovered rounds, excuse me, uh, ballistics consistent with, with four rounds and all three of the individuals were, of the young men were struck. Um, our detectives uh, worked that scene. Uh, we closed the scene once we had uh, recovered all the evidence that we could and we began the processes to follow this through uh, in the new day. So on Sunday, uh, we began new interviews with witnesses, with the victims who were available to us. One was not owing to medical treatment. We began re-canvassing. Patrol officers, which are the backbone of any police department, had done that kind of work at the initial response. Um, uh, canvases, knocking on doors, attempting to see whether there were cameras in the vicinity. Unfortunately, we did not have a lot of good camera coverage as we have in other incidents in our downtown. Uh, but today, on Sunday, detectives began to do that again, again working with detectives out of that Chittenden County Gun Violence Task Force and with new partners too. So not only are our normal uh, long-term partners in the ATF, but new partners as well, uh, folks with whom we have strong relationships but don't have occasion to work as often, but were brought in by the tremendous amount of uh, concern and attention that this case garnered at the highest levels of uh, government. Uh, uh, I received personal calls from both senators, uh, from our congresswoman. Uh, we knew the governor was paying attention to this case, and we knew uh, that it was being addressed at the highest levels as well as the mayor's phone call with the president just now indicates. Uh, the FBI brought in a number of people uh, and were able to augment our uh, resources as we pursued this case. At approximately, uh, just after 3.30, uh, excuse me, at approximately 15.38 during a door knock canvas at the location of the shooting, uh, members of the ATF knocked on a door that had been closed the night before. Officers that the previous night had done a sweep of that entire location for both investigatory reasons and for security. So officers, armed officers went through that, uh, that apartment building, but we did not have probable cause to go into every single apartment. So if people answered the doors, we spoke to them. And if they didn't, or if the apartment appeared closed, it is in fact a holiday weekend, uh, we had no uh, legal authority to go into units in that moment, especially since at least one witness had indicated that the shooter had in fact left left the scene heading north. And so the notion of being able to just enter apartments was, was not available to us. 
We instead did this re-canvas door knock, and upon knocking on one door, uh, the ATF agents were greeted by a man who uh, stepped out of the hall, uh, out of the door towards them with his palms up at waist height and stated something to the effect of, I've been waiting for you. The ATF agents said, why is that? And the gentleman said in some substance, I would like a lawyer. Uh, he stepped into the hallway. They moved between him and the door and said, well, why is that? Uh, he stated, uh, I, I would like a lawyer. Do you have any guns in there? He stated that he had one. They asked if he had any others. He stated again, I think I would like a lawyer. At that point, he was detained. He was taken to our uh, police headquarters by a marked cruiser of the Burlington Police Department. And we swept that location only for security, uh, which is a different level of sweep than a search, closed the locations, uh, secured it, and then obtained a search warrant, uh, working closely with the state's attorney's office and with the U.S. attorney's office to make certain that that warrant was something that was going to be useful to both if it came to being something that we would use either with the state's attorney or with the U.S. attorney. Um, we conducted investigations during that time as well, including finding out that uh, the gentleman in custody, Mr. Eaton, had purchased a 380 recently. Uh, we discovered that uh, there was a uh, that he was. We spoke to some people who knew him. The warrant was granted by a Vermont judge, and it was executed at approximately 21:53 hours. Uh, and at that point, it, during that search, we recovered a 380 firearm and Hornady red tip ammunition. ATF tests through the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network, or NIBIN, have since connected that firearm to the casings that were recovered at the scene of the shooting. You know, cops, cops often say that it's better to be lucky than good, but it's really even better to be both. And I believe that's what we have here. We certainly had a lot of incredibly good work, uh, but to go to an address and find that individual in this way, too, is, is a little bit more than just good work. Uh, we have a lot more to do, however. Even with this arrest, we are still working. There is more investigation to be done, and that includes trying to determine motive. Uh, we still do not know as much as we want to know. But I would urge the public and you in the media to avoid making conclusions based on statements from people who know even less than we currently do. We are working hard to find out this information, and we are nowhere near the end of this investigation. Uh, but uh, we are trying to determine what we have beyond the knowledge that, yes, this person, we have full probable cause to believe, committed this horrible, horrible crime. Our next step will be building that case to make certain that it is as strong as possible when we, uh, so that we can deliver it to the state's attorney. So. Hi, everybody. My name is Rich Bryce. I'm the uncle of uh, one of the shooting victims, Hisham Awartani. He's my nephew. And I'm proud to be here with, with Roddy uh, Tamimi, who is the uncle of Kanan. And, and uh, Roddy, will you join me? Um, we speak only on behalf of the family because the family can't be here. Um, I want to say that these three young men are incredible. And that's not just uh, proud uncle speaking, but it's, it's true. The, they are, uh, they have their lives in front of them. They are committed to building incredible lives. They each go to great schools. They were our house guests for Thanksgiving as they have the past few Thanksgivings. Um, we had just been to my eight-year-old twins birthday party. Uh, these three college students who, who, if you're in college, who wants to go to an eight, year old birthday party, but these three guys did, and they came, they played with my boys. We had just come home, um, and they were walking around the block, uh, and this is uh, when this happened. I can tell you that I've, I've been with them almost constantly since Saturday evening. I've been listening to them talk to one another and try to process the events, and I'm blown away by their resilience by their good humor in the face of these difficult times. And uh, I want to extend gratitude on behalf of the families to the uh, leadership of Chief Murad and the work of the Burlington Police Department, uh, the work of uh, the federal agencies that are on the ground, um, to uh, Mayor Moreau and, and his team. 
I moved here 15 years ago, and uh, I never imagined that this sort of thing could happen. And my sister lives in the occupied West Bank, and people often ask me, aren't you worried about your sister? Aren't you worried about your, your nephews and your niece? And the reality is, as difficult as their life is, they are surrounded by an incredible sense of community. And tragic irony is not even the right phrase, but to have them come stay with me for Thanksgiving and have something like this happen speaks to the level of civic vitriol, uh, speaks to the level of uh, uh, hatred that exists uh, in some corners of this, of this country. It speaks to a sickness of gun violence that exists in this country. And uh, I'm proud of, even though this is devastating that this happened in this community, I am really proud and grateful to the community that is here and has rallied around uh, our family and these boys. And I want to finally say, I'll, I'll ask Roddy to say some words, but I, I want to finally say thank you to um, the staff at UVM Medical Center, the doctors and nurses and staff have been so kind and um, committed to the well-being of these young men. Um, I'm grateful to them, as is, uh, as is the, the families. Uh, and uh, Roddy here, the uncle of Kanan, just flew in from California. And I haven't had a chance to say hello, hello Roddy. Hello. <laughs> I don't know that I have the same words that you have prepared. Uh, but thank you for that. Uh, he speaks for myself and the whole family. Um, for all three of the families involved, uh, it's, I, I'm still processing, processing everything. I just got here from California and uh, walked right in, as you saw. Um, we consider ourselves very lucky at this point, as far as Kenan's family is concerned. Um, not so with, the, uh, um, with Hisham and Tahseen. Um, we're really praying for them, and we're still in shock over this, and as he stated, um, Kinan grew up in the West Bank, and we always thought that that could be more of a risk uh, in terms of his safety. And sending him here would be a, you know, uh, the right decision. And 